Welcome to another edition of Currently in Quincy. I'm Joe Catalano, and on today's program, we will get an update from the friends of the Thomas Crane Public Library. Hillary Miller is here with that. First, though, we take a look at the weather and the news for you. Currently in Quincy, it is unbelievably warm out there, 63 degrees with some hazy sunshine, kind of breezy as well. And that's how today will turn out, partly cloudy, breezy, and mild with highs in the low to mid 60s this afternoon. And really not that chilly this evening. It'll be cloudy. Lows will drop off tonight only into the mid 50s. Sets the stage for kind of a 50-50 weekend. Looks like a little bit of rain tomorrow morning mostly. Should be some clearing later tomorrow and a bit cooler with highs tomorrow in the upper 50s and then a dramatic drop off in temperatures, but lots of sunshine on Sunday with highs in the lower 50s, even cooler on Monday. It'll be very crisp with a high on Monday, only around 41 degrees. Again, 63 with some hazy sunshine in Quincy right now. Checking news for you today, the Quincy City Council has agreed to take the IHOP restaurant property in Quincy Center by eminent domain. The council unanimously approved the land taking earlier this week. That clears the way for the development of a 1,000 space parking garage. Mayor Thomas Koch says that new garage will service a new apartment complex with new retail space planned in that same area. The next step is, is certainly for our legal team to continue to work with the owner of the property, which is LBC, uh, in executing these, these next pieces. Uh, along with IHOP, um, there's more than another tenant that was in there, but they have moved out one of the urgent care facilities. Mm -hmm. uh, so we don't have to deal with that one so much. So there's that. There's the, in the coming weeks, we'll be presenting a land disposition agreement to the city council, uh, which would then open up the property around the garage for development that we have designated Atlantic Development as that developer. So the south of the bridge, um, this would be a nice project that would be including obviously the garage and the units and the grocer and the bank and the coffee shop. And um, as was discussed a few weeks back when uh, Atlantic Development presented informally to the planning board laying out the, uh, the project. Mayor says the city's trying to find a new location for IHOP, but says it may have to pay the restaurant if a new location can't be found. City will pay LBC developers of Boston $9.45 million for the IHOP property. City Council had approved that funding earlier this year. Councilors will now consider whether to transfer the land to Atlantic Development of Hingham for creation of a seven-story, 300-unit apartment building that may contain a Trader Joe's market on the ground floor. Now, the issue of traffic cutting through neighborhoods between Hancock Street and Quincy Shore Drive in Quincy took center stage at this week's City Council meeting. Ward 6 Councilor William Harris submitted a resolution calling on the city's traffic engineer to study that issue and also called on the state to redesign the intersection of Quincy Shore Drive and East Quantum Street. Ward 6, which has uh, been a nightmare to the residents um, with respect to speeding and in and out uh, with um, no, uh, with di disregard of public safety to my constituents. Tonight, this resolve I am bringing forward, plain and simple, is a request to bring together the council, the city uh, traffic engineer, and uh, I'm sure our state legislature um, team uh, as well to be involved, to take a hard dive to come to a possible solution of this serious issue that I hear, um, I have heard uh, since my tenure um, as the Ward 6 Counselor. The cut through traffic affects residents crossing the streets, leaving their homes, getting in and out of their cars, walking their children, Harris says the cut through traffic is creating a safety hazard for pedestrians, especially children walking to school. City Council approved of Harris's resolution unanimously and placed it into committee for further discussion. 
There are at least 79 properties in Quincy that have lead water lines. City Council this week approved a resolution from Councilor at Large Noel DeBona calling on those property owners to reach out to the city to have the lead pipes replaced with copper lines. Mayoral spokesman Chris Walker says the city will pay for the pipe replacements. As we do now, we sort of pick them off as they come, counselor. We find out that someone has a lead service line. We know maybe, as you mentioned, we might be in the house or near the street for whatever reason, and we'll then go in. But again, as, as, as Councilor Kane and, uh, and as is the, the goal of this uh, initiative is to get those folks who have not um, availed themselves to the opportunity that exists right now. Uh, we, we try to find, uh, we try to get folks to, to, to come to us and say, you know, I, I'm one of these folks that has a lead service line, would you please replace it? And the answer is always yes. A city solicitor, Jim Timmons, cautioned that the order may violate constitutional rights of private property owners, so that resolution was placed into committee for further review. There are three new firefighters on the job here in Quincy. Swearing-in ceremonies were held on Monday in the Great Hall at Quincy City Hall for Jonathan Conso, Timothy Barron, and Jake Williamson. All three were lateral transfers from other departments. Jonathan Conso comes from the Rockland Fire Department. Timothy Barron is the son of former Quincy Fire Chief Joe Barron. He comes from the Plymouth Fire Department, and Jake Williamson transferred to Quincy from the Hull Fire Department. Quincy Fire Chief Joe Jackson says all three will begin their new duties immediately because they are already Fire Academy trained. Massachusetts Secretary of Veterans Services Dr. John Santiago was the guest speaker at a recent event honoring veterans at the Norfolk County Registry of Deeds in Dedham. Register Bill O'Donnell was joined by Santiago and Gold Star wife Jeanette Rose Gutzall in unveiling the third volume of their notable land records titled We Remembered Our Veterans. Santiago spoke about the difficulty some veterans have transitioning back into civilian life. He pledged to do more to support them. The event also included music and local veterans offering the Pledge of Allegiance. Those who attended the event were able to stroll the registry's Great Hall and view storyboards detailing the history of various military branches and also view the list of the 20 Norfolk County veterans who were awarded the Medal of Honor. It's our check of news for you today. Coming up, we sit down with Hillary Miller of the Friends of the Thomas Crane Public Library for an update. That's next. Welcome back. It's been a little bit since we had an update from the friends of the Thomas Crane Public Library, and a lot has happened since they've been here last. Hillary Miller is joining us once again to tell us all about it. Good to see you, Hillary. Oh, so good to see you. Thank you for having me. Oh, always a pleasure to talk about our neighbors right next door here, the main branch anyway, right? Yes, exactly. That's a pretty, pretty short distance to walk, although pretty nice on a wonderful day like today. Exactly, yeah, sure. <laughs> um, lot, as I mentioned, a lot has happened since last yes. year. I think it was in the springtime. Yes, yeah, so I was here um, back in April, yeah. I believe, and at that point we had announced that the bookstore would be moving. Yes. Well, it has happened. Yes. And I know that you have covered it here. Yes. Um, but yeah, it's been pretty exciting for the friends of the library to have our bookstore move to a new location. The uh, opening and ribbon cutting was back in early September. Um, so for anybody who hasn't been been there yet we have moved the library or the excuse me the bookstore from the back of the library right up front in the atrium uh, so it's very easily accessible it's visible and super. very welcoming yeah super visible have you found a lot of folks uh, that are finding it for the first time yeah, I, I believe I, so I, yeah, yeah we've had a good bit of traffic in there it's just such a convenient location uh, so it's much easier and again I think more welcoming too mm -hmm. uh, we had some wonderful graphics made really the the library uh, helped us with those have those graphics made that have welcoming messages in multiple languages, really reflecting oh. that diversity of Quincy and welcoming everybody in. Yeah, very good. So you, I mean, literally you have moved around the corner. You were in the <laughs> old children's room yes. off Spear Street, the back. Exactly. Right? Yeah. Yes. So this is a bigger space, I'm guessing, a brighter space, and certainly more visible. Yeah, much, yeah. much more visible. Yeah. Um, and again, easier to access there. And really what's nice is that sometimes we can 
you know, bleed out into the uh, the atrium there, really take over some of that space uh -huh. in terms of having um, donation bins available at all times and even being able to put some sales materials out there yeah, too. Sure. I mean, it used to be the cafe, right, for folks who were wondering where it was. Yes, exactly, yeah. the cafe. Um, so kind of reconfigured in a new way for a new use. Yeah, but it's also set up nicely. You can get your books, the bookstore, and there's tables and chairs set up right there in the atrium if you want to read it right away, right? Yeah, exactly. The library really becomes even more of a destination than it was before, sure. somewhere where you can spend hours and hours and just enjoy yourself. Yeah. So what can we find in the new location for the bookstore, Hillary? Oh, we have a little bit of everything yeah. still, anything from you know, your classics to uh, children's books to DVDs. Um, our bookstore committee, those folks are absolutely wonderful with really going through all of our donations um, and also curating selections for upcoming holidays, for different events we have going on, just things going on in the community. So really you can always find something new you know, there in, in the bookstore. So if you're, you know, have something in mind, like in the spring you're thinking about gardening, mm. we'll get some gardening books out for you. Yes, yeah, well I mean it really is when you walk in it's set up just like a professional, quote unquote, you know, chain type big, exactly. big bookstore. Yeah, you yeah. get the same feeling. Yeah, and if you have any questions about what's in there, um, you can always ask our, our wonderful staff that yeah. we have. Speaking of, do you need yeah. help at the bookstore? Hillary? Oh, we could always use help. Okay. Um, one of the good things is that we are expanding our hours. So this takes a lot of a lot of volunteers. This is a completely volunteer run endeavor. So yeah. it takes volunteers to be able to have the bookstore open for all those hours and not just being there out in the public working there in the store. Um, it also involves going through all the donations we receive for books and sorting them and really, again, curating those collections, thinking about what's coming up maybe uh, people are going to be doing a lot of cooking or maybe uh, decluttering in the new year. So thinking about what books will be helpful to them. Sure. So it's a, it's a big undertaking and we appreciate any volunteer support. Uh, there is information on our website okay. for anybody interested in volunteering, okay. how to get uh -huh. in touch with us. Who can be a volunteer at the bookstore? Really just about That's anybody great. can be yeah. a volunteer. Yes, uh, we welcome everybody. Um, I believe if you are, you know, a minor, you probably you need to have somebody with you. Oh, sure. Um, yeah. Although we do sometimes offer opportunities for for kids to come in and, and volunteer as well. I'm okay, um, really good. trying to uh, find, especially teenagers, to mm -hmm. find different ways to engage them. Okay. Yeah, you've got a, I know a whole section for uh, for young adults and children. Yes, we right? do. Yeah. Which is nice, so they can probably help with that. I'm guessing. Uh, in terms of donations, how do folks do that, and what do you? What are the parameters for making a donation to the bookstore? Yeah, wonderful question. Yeah. So, um, really, the donations can be accepted at bins that have been moved into the atrium. Okay. Uh, really, any time the library is open. Oh, okay. And those, um, if you think about, you know, if you have gently used books or DVDs, mm -hmm. those types of materials at home, um, again, gently use, mm -hmm. uh, but bring those in. So, if you are thinking about about, I know this is hard for me getting rid of books. <laughs> you know, just thinking about somebody who might use them and yes. find a new home for those books. Okay. And this is a great way to really support your library and uh, and maybe clean up some space in your house right. as well. <laughs> yeah. So is it any kind of books? I mean, is it paperbacks? Is it you know coffee table books? Uh, research books? Yeah, a, a little bit of everything. Okay. Um, Textbooks, those sorts of things are a little bit harder for us. Um, well, I would have to check and see. Exactly, yeah. but coffee table books are especially great, especially this time of the year when mm -hmm. you people are thinking about gift options okay. for the holidays. Um, so really anything anything that you have, even if you think it might be kind of specialized, it doesn't hurt to maybe you know give us a, give us a call or um, send us an email and okay. ask if, if that's what we take. Okay, all right, very good. Uh, DVDs are still a thing, huh? They are. Okay, all right. They are. So you can still find them there, and uh, you'll still take them. I'm sure a lot of folks have, you know, shelves and shelves of them that they oh, don't know what to do with anymore. Oh, certainly, yes. Yeah. Okay, very good. Uh, you mentioned a teen uh, uh, space. There's a new teen room at the main library. Yes, it's very exciting. Yes. Uh, the teens have had different spaces in the library for a number of years. Um, but this is the first dedicated yeah. teen space, sort of a teens only type of area <laughs> uh, for them. It's in the Coletti wing yep. of the library. Uh, you may have noticed it outside, um, especially walking by at night. Um, it really stands out now because there's a brand new paint color. Yeah. Uh, the teen advisory board picked out you know, some new decor and it really makes a difference. If you're even walking by the exterior of the library, you can see it. Hmm. Um, so that was opened back in September. They had a ribbon cutting for 
that as mm -hmm. well. Mm -hmm. uh, the Friends of the Library um, is happy to support the teen librarian in hosting a number of different programs for teens in that space there. And they get pretty busy after sure. school. Yeah, I would bet. So, I mean, just the, the fact that they have now a teen librarian and a teen advisory board is new, right? That, y yes, yeah. that is. So they're really thinking about how to reach out to that segment of our community, yes. how to embrace them, and whether that means some different programming, a space to hang out, or comfy chairs to relax in. And right. you know, we're able to provide that now. Yeah. You know, a lot of the uh, things we've talked about have all been happening at the main branch, but the Friends uh, support programs at all the branches, right? Exactly. Yeah, yeah we are friends to all of the branches right. of, the, of the library. And some of these programs are happening at various branches. Uh, Friends sponsor programs programs for adults, children, teens, across all of our branches uh, here in the Quincy community. So mm -hmm. we can really make sure that we have that reach and pro you know, provide those services. Sure. The, I'm guessing the uh, funds raised through the bookstore are your main source of funding for all the different programs it's, that you sponsor. It's right? certainly a big part of our, yeah. uh, of our funding. It's nice that we do make it easier now um, for folks uh, to contribute to that because we do take, I do want to mention we take cash and credit now yes. in the bookstore. So those funds will then uh, come into the, the friends, you know, so then we can allocate those out to the different programs. Um, but that's not the only way that we, that we bring money in to support these programs. Uh, membership is yeah. also a major part of our, of our fundraising okay. every year. Okay, so let's talk about that. How does one become a member and what are the benefits? Oh, there are many benefits. Uh, the main benefits is that you receive a special newsletter you know, a couple of times a year, the, the Friends of the Library newsletter, with mm -hmm. all sorts of wonderful updates from the library um, and different features. Uh, you also uh, can um, uh, you get events, uh, special event invitations. Uh, also, you know that you are supporting your community library, yes, supporting yes. the community at large. So you can really, there's no value you can place <laughs> on that. You know, it's really something that we all treasure. Uh, how to become a member though, we, we make it pretty easy. We try to give you some different options for joining. Uh, the, one of the ways is to go to our website, and that's just thomascranelibrary.org slash friends. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, so you can go there, and you will see information for joining the Friends of the Library. You can actually join online. There is a way to pay right on the website. Also on the website, though, there is a membership form that you can print out and mail it in with a check. Okay. And we have the address on the website as well okay. where to send that. Okay. It's pretty affordable, right? $10 or 15 for yeah, families? Individual memberships yeah. start at ten dollars okay. family memberships or household memberships at 15 okay yeah, All right. and then people can decide if they would like to uh, provide additional support beyond that as well we're of always happy to uh, of course yeah. <laughs> have our friends who support us sure you can also um, I think this is kind of nice make a donation in honor or memory of someone right exactly yeah. yes you can uh, in in memory or honor of a, a friend or loved one, uh, which is really great thinking about it going into the holiday season. I yeah. mean, what do you get? If you're not buying something for them in our bookstore, what do you get the person who has everything? You know, make a donation in their honor right. you know, through the friends at the library. Sure, absolutely. Um, you mentioned that you'd uh, fund some special programs like the after hours event that was not too long ago, right? Oh, that was just a couple of weeks ago. Yeah. That's right. Uh, after hours events um, are twice a year yeah. and we just had one in October that was Halloween themed <laughs> and people dressed up. So yeah. that was really wonderful. We had a costume contest. Including so yourself. I, I was dressed up, yes. <laughs> yes, um, as a, we call it a generic storybook character. <laughs> yes, so. Did you win a prize? I did not. Oh, oh I thought for a little while we had it, but. Yeah. Um, no, uh, so no prizes for me this time. The, it was a pretty tight race. Yeah, I'm sure. Who won? Do you remember? Um, it was actually um, it was actually one of my friends. Oh, so okay. another you know, member of the community here out enjoying the evening. Fun, fun. Uh, so let's talk um, a little bit about all of the museum passes that you can get from the Friends so of the Thomas many. Library. So many, right? Yes, yeah. uh, we are so pleased to be able to offer these to the community through the library. Number of museum passes, um, and it's not just museum museums either. We have a little bit of everything. Oh, okay. um, so we have some general passes or children's museum passes like the Boston Children's Museum. We have some history museums as well. Um, 
thinking about the House of the Seven Gables. Mm. Uh, we also have uh, some different, you know, where it blends a line of science and history, like the New Bedford Whaling Museum, some art museum passes as well. Yep. Uh, thinking about the Museum of Fine Arts as an example, and zoo passes. Yes. I know that those can be pretty popular as yes. well, Franklin Park Zoo, Roger Williams Zoo. And what's nice is that just from those couple of examples mm -hmm. I provided, you can really see it's not just places here in Quincy. We mm -hmm. have a lot of wonderful institutions here in Quincy uh, to support, but also thinking about what our community, like, or what they like to do beyond the borders of Quincy. So you know, thinking about how they can get out into the broader region yeah. and supporting that. Um, so those are available on the library website. They have a whole page dedicated to the, the museum and zoo passes. Yeah, there's, I think, at least 30 of them I looked yeah, at. It's a pretty extensive morning. list, yeah. yeah. Um, so you'll probably be able year, to find like The Plymouth Patuxent Museum, those are available mm -hmm. as well. Folks want to go to visit that. The Gardner Museum in, in Boston. Um, so, yeah, there's a variety. So how does uh, one get those passes? This, you, for many of these, you can sign up on the website okay. to reserve them. That um, A lot of them are going to digital passes there. Oh, okay. um, there are some restrictions, so you may have to plan ahead a little bit for oh. these in terms of you can only reserve up to two passes per month and only one pass a day. So it does you know, make it worthwhile to kind of think ahead okay. you know, to see what you might like. Yeah. Um, especially as we get farther into the winter and February vacation week comes up, just to start thinking about what you might like to, to see and mm -hmm. do. So you don't use up all of your, your time with the passes too early. You want to make sure that you still have yeah. you know, one of those reservations left. Oh, how far ahead can you uh, make a reservation? You know, I'm not 100% okay. certain, but I think you can find that uh, through, the, um, through the library website. Okay, but you have to be a friend. You do not. Oh, you do not? No, you do not have oh, to be I a didn't friend. Oh, I that. Okay. And we're just happy to support the program. That's super. How many friends are there, Hillary, right now, even just roughly? Well, let's see. We are a growing organization. I mean, we're, we're over a couple of hundred strong. Our mailing list is growing you know, by the day mm. that we're able to reach you know, well over 500 people with our, right? yeah, oh. with our communication, um, but we want more. We want more friends. You know, we're really heading into our uh, annual membership drive. Okay. So if we're always happy to keep welcoming people into our circle. Yeah, that's super. Um, and again, anybody, no age limit to be a friend as well, right? No, not really. No. Yeah, um, those household, you know, the household memberships yes. are really great for you know, a family if there are children there that they can all you know, help instill in children and these coming generations mm. that love for the the library and their community. Yeah, I know in the past the friends have funded things, uh, very uh, basic things like tables and chairs or <laughs> shelving or carpeting or lighting, anything like that coming up in the future that you're, that you're aware of? There are always uh, requests that are coming through from the library yes. and we're happy to help out where we can. It's not just at the main, you know, okay. again, just not at the main library. It's really throughout our entire system. Sure. So seeing what support we can provide that way. So let's talk about the kind of the governmental structure of the Friends, if you, if you can. How sure. It's a, non, it's a nonprofit 501c3 corporation, right? Absolutely, yeah. which also mean, means that any donations then are, um, you know, are supporting 501c3 organizations. So thinking about that for your taxes. They're tax deductible. Tax deductible, yes. yes. So yes. make it by the end of the year. Yeah. Yes, <laughs> yeah, get that get that in before the deadline right, there. Right. Um, although we're happy to have you know that support anytime. Of course. But yeah, 501c3 organization that works in partnership with the library. Yes. So we are not officially you know, uh, library staff right. or anything like that. Right. So we work through supporting them. We do have a board, a mm -hmm. board of directors that oversees um, really the management of and the operations mm -hmm. of the Friends. Uh, so we have um, over a, a dozen members on the board right now. Okay. Yes, and we have committees. You know, we have committee work that we do. Um, our bookstore committee is a wonderf wonderfully visible committee mm -hmm. uh, that is part of the Friends. Sure, okay. Um, social media galore, right? Exactly, <laughs> yes. It's a great way to find out about what we're doing, uh, thinking about our extended library hours. Um, we have, or excuse me, bookstore hours. Yeah. We have bookstore hours now six days a week, and we post regular reminders about them on our social media accounts. You okay. can find us on Facebook and Instagram. You just have to look for Friends of the Thomas Crane Public Library, okay. and you'll be able to find us. Okay. Um, I guess mention the hours of the bookstore. I have them 
right in front of me. As oh, a matter of fact. how convenient. <laughs> Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays, uh, 12.30 to 3.30. Tuesdays are 9.30 to 12.30. Thursdays are 5 to 8. Saturdays, 9.30 to 3.30. But these are all volunteer dependent, right? Exactly. Yeah. Yes, yeah. so it takes a lot of people to be able to have those types of hours. We're yes. really pleased to be able to do it because, yeah, as you read them off, uh, I mean, we have mornings, we have afternoons, we have evenings right. and weekends. Yeah. So it takes a lot of people to bring that together to make that available you know, for the community. Yeah, so uh, volunteer your time if you're, if you're able, right? Exactly. Even, even one day a week might be helpful. Yeah, even you know, one day a month could be helpful. Well, there you go, okay. Uh, I think we hit everything. Anything else you wanna uh, let folks know about? No, just um, that Friends sponsors a number of different events that it's all available on the events calendar on the library okay. website. So I would definitely recommend that folks continue to check that out, see what we're up to, and see what the library is doing these days. Absolutely. We'll have to get another update uh, maybe uh, after the first of the year. Hillary. Oh, perfect. Okay. Thanks for coming by. Well, thanks for having me. You're very welcome. Just enough time to check the forecast for you for the rest of the day today. Beautiful day to walk over to the library, actually. It'll be uh, balmy and breezy with temperatures in the low to mid 60s this afternoon. This evening it'll cloud up and uh, won't cool down too much, only into the mid 50s, sets the stage for kind of a wet Saturday morning, but it's not going to stick around long. We'll see some sunshine later. Highs tomorrow around 60, pretty nice on Sunday, a little cooler in the lower 50s, much cooler on Monday, but abundant sunshine. Uh, it'll feel like uh, late fall, 41 degrees for a high on Monday. Thanks again to Hillary Miller for joining us today from the Friends of the Thomas Crane <laughs> Library. Thank you. Thanks to our crew. Thank you for watching. Monday here in the program, Quincy Elder Services Director Tom Clasby stopping by with an update. Meantime, please check our website anytime, qatv.org. You will find all of our latest programs. There's news and information, video on demand, live streaming, and much more. For all of us here at QATV, I'm Joe Catalano. Have a great weekend.